Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, good morning and blessings in Jesus, friends. I trust that this finds you loving Jesus this morning and anticipating great things in the Spirit. Well, today is September the 26th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, I wanted to take a moment and I want to look back. Uh, as I've told you, we began this ministry at the first of this year. And I want to look back because we begin each and every video with the words, holiness is a way of life or a lifestyle. But I want to stop and think about that for a moment because I think like so many things, just being human, after we hear something for so long, it loses the resonance that it had when we first heard it for the first time. Holiness is a lifestyle. Holiness is a way of life. It's a matter of choices each and every day when we wake up, when we bow in humble surrender before our God and King, our Master and our Lord, and we say unto him, how may we serve you today? What must I do today to bring you honor and glory and recognition in such a dark and evil world? Even among myself, my flesh is dark and evil. And how can I make my flesh recognize, bow the knee and confess that Jesus truly is King of Kings and Lord of Lords? You see, in America specifically, we don't understand what Lord means. We hear it so often, but you have to go back to England, maybe back in the 15th, the 14th, the 13th century, and you have to think about what they thought about when they said the word Lord. This was their master. They were subjects, even slaves under this master. They didn't second guess what he said. His command was their order. And they were to spend all their time, all their effort, and all their energy to fulfill the desire, the command that their king had placed upon them, even if this cost them their lives. And that's what we mean when we say he is our Lord. Well, to better understand this, I want to look at a young man in 2 Kings chapter 18. Now, this young man is named Hezekiah, and the passage will pretty much explain itself. But let's begin in verse 1. Now, it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Now, notice there is a difference here between Israel and Judah, because we have a splitting of the tribes. And so you had a, a king over the kingdom of Israel, and you had another king over the kingdom of Judah. Yet in unity, they still came together and worshiped the true and living God, Jehovah. They understood and knew that he was the one who deserved all their praise. Even though they may have drifted off and served false gods, ultimately they knew that Jehovah was the true and living God. And it says in verse 2, 25 years old was Hezekiah when he began to reign. And he reigned in Judah for 29 years in Jerusalem. Now his mother's name was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. But notice this, friends. Notice this young man, Hezekiah. In, in a, you have to go back to the times of the Jewish people. I mean, there have been many kings that have gone before. Remember, Israel said, we want a king like the pagan nations around us. And God said, no, you don't need a king. I want to be your king. Yeah, but we can't hold you. We can't touch you. We can't speak to you. We want a physical king. And God says, okay, to your own ruin, I will do it. I will allow it. And so he gives them a king. And so the book of First and Second Kings outlines all of the kings that came in succession for the people of Israel. And more of these kings were evil than were good. And yet this young man comes on the scene, 25 years old. He takes 
the kingship from his father as an heir. And it says, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He did that that was right in the sight of the Lord. Well, what was it that was right in the sight of the Lord? How can we look to this as an example in our own lives and fulfill holiness as a lifestyle? Now understand, he's the king of a nation and the nation is predominantly evil. Now let's look at what he did. Verse four, he removed the high places. The high places were exactly that. They were altars built on hills and the people would go there and make sacrifices and worship false gods. And so the first thing Hezekiah does is he goes to these false places of worship and he removes them. He destroys them. He broke the images. He cut down the groves. He break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days, the children of Israel did burn incense to it. Now, what this is speaking of is that when the people of Israel were being plagued for murmuring and complaining against God, God sent serpents throughout the camp that bit and killed and sickened and poisoned the people. And Moses went to God and said, why are you doing this? deliver your people from such suffering. And God says, okay, I'll do it. But the only way I'll do it is you've got to raise a pole in the air with a serpent on top of the pole. And when the people look to the serpent on that pole, they will be cured. Now we know that this is an example of sin upon the cross. And if we look to the cross, we'll be cured from that sin. But in that day, they didn't know it. And so what they did, because it did bring healing to the people Instead of worshiping the God that provided the healing, as we so often do, they began to worship the image. And they're doing this all the way up until this time, maybe thousands of years later. And so Hezekiah sees this, he realizes this, and he tears this thing down and he breaks it because even that, that signifies God, maybe that would be the cross for us today, the crucifix, that image, that emblem is not to be worshiped. The living God is to be worshiped. That's just a piece of wood. That's just a piece of metal. It doesn't deserve our worship. It doesn't deserve any recognition other than a reminder of what God has done for us. And that's what Hezekiah is doing. But notice he totally destroys that which is evil, that which is against God, and he rebuilds that which is for God. He rebuilds true altars, true places of worship for God. For it says in verse five, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him, there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. You know, friends, that's what I want people to say about me. Is that what you want people to say about you? I've met many Christians in my life, but I've never met anyone that was so devout in their love relationship with their Lord as that young man, as that young woman. I would hope that that would be the legacy you would want to be left behind. That's the legacy Hezekiah left behind. There was none as righteous as him among all the kings that existed in Israel as King Hezekiah. Why? Because of what he did for the Lord. He destroyed everything behind him. He set his eyes on what was before him, and that's what he stood to. And that's what we need to do, friends. We need to do a house cleaning. Judgment must begin at the house of God. We must go into our homes. We must take that which does not represent, glorify, and bring praise to the Lord Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and we need to take them outside and we need to break them in pieces. We need to burn them. It may be your computer. It may be your TV. It may be magazines or books. It may be a cell phone. It may be jewelry. It may be makeup. It may be a video game system. It may be records or CDs. But friends, we need to take these things out where they belong and we need to destroy them, break them in pieces. And then we need to look forward on what a life of holiness truly means. 
Each and every aspect of our lives should exalt and bring Jesus glory. And we're not going to find that in much of the music we listen to, much of the things that we watch on TV, many of the things we look at on social media, or we read in books or magazines, or we play on video games. These, none of these bring glory to Jesus, friends. So it's time that we get serious with God. We become as that of the man, the king, Hezekiah, so that no one who went before him or came after had such devotion to his God as this young man. Friends, may it be true of you today. May it be true of me today. May we spend the rest of our days on this earth trying to be the very best that we can be for our God, our King, our Savior, and our Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'm so grateful that you're here again this morning. My prayer is that you're growing into the man and woman of God that he has so created you to be, and that you'll bring him glory and honor in each and everything that you do, each and everything that you say, and each and everything that you think. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I do love you, and I'll see you on the next video.